welcome to a new video it is time for the ultimate camera comparison between the magic 4 ultimate against uh, the sony xperia pro i almost one inch sized sensor against an yeah one inch sized sensor even though not the whole sensor is used which one of those is the better let's get started So we see already a very big difference in terms of camera bumps and camera humps. If you thought the Sony Xperia Pro I has a big camera hump, no. <laughs> Just uh, yeah, look at this Magic 4 Ultimate. It is really a magic camera uh, hump. And uh, when it comes to the sensors, it's pretty easy on the Sony. We have a triple 12 megapixel sensor setup with an almost one inch size usage here of the type one sensor that Sony has here. On the Magic 4 Ultimate, we have a bit of difference, two 64 megapixel sensors and two 50 megapixel sensors as far as I'm aware. And uh, yeah, also almost one inch size sensor here on the a magic 4 ultimate and of course we have also something on the front here we have a pill shaped cutout on the magic 4 ultimate with a nice front shooting camera and of course the xperia with its classical 8 megapixel sensor that probably don't won't win any awards and also will not win against the magic 4 ultimate but i think we will start with this front facing video this is the front facing video now on the Xperia Pro I and as you can see here we have a little bit of overblown highlights in the background it doesn't do as well with HDR as other phones do it is only limited to 1080p 30 frames per second which is a bit of like a bummer I would say and uh, yeah this is what you can get in terms of the front facing video I think it's doing a pretty good job also stabilization is doing pretty well as long as I don't bump into too many stones here on this road and uh, yeah this is the Xperia Pro i front facing video let's check it out and compare it with the Magic 4 Ultimate and this is uh, now the Honor Magic 4 Ultimate's front facing camera in its wide setting it can record a little bit higher here also 4k 30 frames per second as you can see here but it's limited to 15 minutes where you don't have a limit in 1080p of course and uh, yeah this is the widest setting i can go to 0.8 times which crops in a little bit and i think the footage is slightly bit more stable and at one times it is more cropped in a little bit uh, like the sony and uh, i think it's the most stable in this mode but yeah i think the 0.8 time is the best when it comes to this uh, stabilization otherwise hdr I think it's not working so good when it comes to like overblown highlights in the background as well but uh, it keeps my face nicely exposed and of course 4k is a better quality than 1080p so clear winner here the honor magic 4 ultimate let's compare the back cameras and we start with the main camera of the magic 4 ultimate so this is now 4k 30 frames per second on the main cam of the magic 4 ultimate as you can see a nice background blur around me very good for an almost one inch size sensor it's really almost like uh, yeah dslr like or dslm like so you can really get away with vlogging this thing and people thinking oh this might be a uh, yeah, very expensive camera that you're using actually it's a very expensive phone that i'm using but uh, anyway uh, this is the stabilization colors and hdr of this phone what do you think about this so this is now the main camera on the Xperia Pro i and as you can see here we get the nice creamy background blur as well. It should be as creamy as on the uh, Magic 4 Ultimate because we have a slightly larger sensor here even though it is not using the whole sensor size but also the aperture is with f2 a little bit smaller so let's say well let's see uh, let's uh, I listen to you which one is uh, the better in terms of background blur I think I like it both uh, but the Sony has a bit, little bit of better colors in the video not so punchy not so contrasty but still looking very natural and this is something not so over sharpened as well that we don't have simply on the Magic 4 Ultimate on the Magic 4 Ultimate by default it is not 
it's so great it's too punchy too contrasty and a little bit too sharp over sharpened even which i don't really like uh, one of the big disadvantages of the xperia pro i is that i cannot record to the or switch to the ultra wide angle i have to stop switch to the ultra wide angle and now i'm at 16 millimeter ultra wide angle one of the big advantages this is one of the best ultra wide angles on the market even though it's only 16 millimeters a bit narrower than the one on the magic 4 ultimate we get very good quality not only stabilization good hdr we get very very good quality out of the sensor this is the perfect one for vlogging i would say in bright daylight conditions for nighttime maybe not so much you don't get so much creamy bokeh or background blur you don't have so much everything like in focus but at least you get enough enough to see stuff around you enough for vlogging what do you think about this one here and now we have the zoom camera it's only a two times zoom so it's a bit of a limited kind of uh, zoom 50 millimeters here and i can zoom in a little bit as you can see yeah, up to 6.3 times but the quality is not the best so probably have to wait for the one mark 4 to get better zoom quality on a sony and this is now the ultra wide angle on the honor magic 4 ultimate as you can see it's so ultra wide that you can see a lot of my arm probably in the shot as well uh, because it has this 11 millimeters super ultra wide angle of view the big advantage of the honor magic 4 ultimate is that you have the ability at least up to 4k 30 switch between all the camera lenses that are built into this uh, camera system of the honor magic 4 ultimate and what i can do you uh, do to you right now is showing you the zoom test of this one here so if i just go in here you can see how wide it looks like and now i i'm able to zoom in slowly steadily this is uh, one time switched lenses now and now i can go four times 4.1 times it switched lenses and i can go the seven times let's go to the 6.3 times that the sony had this is roughly 6.3 times as you can see a better quality already because we have a better zoom lens 64 megapixel three and a half times zoom already and uh, we can go up to 10 times and as you can see here for a video zooming in to this um, ship here it doesn't look so bad does it one cool thing that you can do with the Xperia Pro I is switch the aperture to f4 if you want to have a bit of more depth of field or because it's so sunny right now if you have to fight against the sun and want to still maintain a nice shutter speed you have the possibility to go to our f4 which has a little bit more in focus right now with the main camera uh, that is and what do you think about the quality here in theory because the f stop number is a little bit smaller the opening is a bit smaller it gets a little bit sharper here and there but also the depth of field is reduced but what do you think about this yeah ability to just switch to the f4 which might be very good not only for vlogging but also for taking photos when you take photos of things that you just want to have in focus where you don't want to have this background blur uh, what do you think about this uh, feature here on the xperia pro i we have the photos on the left always the magic 4 ultimate on the right always the xperia pro i on first glance you can see directly that we have a much higher dynamic range effect on the magic 4 ultimate but also a different kind of view so a slightly different kind of view what i want to show you here right now is the difference in how hdr is rendered so first of all you can see in the sun that the magic 4 ultimate has a better hdr algorithm because it preserves more around the sun of the blue sky though it also lifts the shadows and this is not always what you want to have as you can see on the xperia pro i it's a much more dramatic kind of view because it leaves this tree in the shadow it leaves this shadow this dark and is not making it yeah like this grayish kind of uplifted way on the magic 4 ultimate in general what we can also see here the magic 4 ultimate has the worst glass in front of the lens or in front of the sensor so the lens itself is a bit weaker than the xperia pro i this is why we get this lens flare effect that we don't see on the xperia pro i both do a fantastic job in terms of hdr because me taking the photo i couldn't see anything because the sunshine was just too harsh taking a look at close-up shots what we notice is that the xperia pro i in general tends to warmer the color you can see it in the background with the green leaves here 
and it's a bit cooler on the Magic 4 Ultimate. When it comes to sharpness, both are very, very close, but I think I see a tad more sharpness with the Xperia Pro I, but this has something simply to do with the Magic 4 Ultimate having a larger aperture, very large sensor size. It's using a little bit more of the sensor than the Xperia Pro I is using. So the sensor size it's using here in the Magic 4 Ultimate is one over 1.2 inch size, and the Xperia Pro I is using only of this one type one inch size sensor is only using one over 1.3 inch size uh, which is uh, a big difference so this is why you can see the creamier bokeh on the magic 4 ultimate a bit more busy bokeh with almost yeah like noise creeping in on the xperia pro i when we take a look at the normal shots and colors we can see much more punchier colors on the magic 4 ultimate again a little bit more cooler the xperia pro i warmer this is why you see in the sky a bit less of this blue but more like of a warm reddish kind of tint when it comes to sharpness both take 12 megapixel shots but the magic 4 ultimate is using pixel binning from i think it's 50 megapixel main camera sensor where the xperia pro i just uses the 12 megapixels and both in terms of sharpness provide almost the same there's not much of a difference as you can see here it is uh, both the same though the magic 4 ultimate also has a slightly bit of more contrast added when we come to the ultra wide angle it changes there we have the more bluish kind of tint and tone on the xperia pro i and more yellowish kind of tone on the magic 4 ultimate as you can see in the blue sky that is just simply a bit more yellowish on the magic 4 ultimate and blue on the xperia pro i what is very interesting is that we have almost the same field of view though the magic 4 ultimate uses an 11 millimeter it by default if you click on the ultra wide angle uses 15 millimeter instead of going to the super ultra wide 11 millimeters because it's usually like i demonstrated in my earlier videos having less quality so it's going to the better quality 15 millimeters which is slightly wider than the third, uh, 16 millimeters of the xperia pro i when it comes to sharpness and colors and everything else the xperia pro i beats the magic 4 ultimate as you can see here sharpness the details in the grass first of all the color is completely wrong on the magic 4 ultimate the grass was not yellow uh, as you can see here it is like it has this yellowish tint it was really this green as on the xperia pro i and the second is like the sharpness the little details of the grass arms you can see them on the xperia pro i and it's a mess on the magic 4 ultimate it's very very soft there even though the magic 4 ultimate uses pixel binning from a 64 megapixel uh, sensor and creates 16 megapixels out of this the xperia pro i with its 12 megapixels just looks sharper is sharper and more detailed just look at the background and the crushed shadows first of all but also the details that are lacking in those trees for example so overall also edges very soft on the magic 4 ultimate a bit softer than than the center on the xperia pro i but still a lot sharper than the magic 4 ultimate so the xperia pro i has one of the best ultra wide angles and it clearly shows here even though it cannot go as wide as the magic 4 ultimate can go with the 11 millimeters the 11 millimeters looks even worse than the 50 millimeters zoom shot completely different world here the xperia pro i only has two times zoom 2.1 times zoom which is roughly 55 millimeters 52 millimeters i think and it is okayish there's a bit of over sharpening going on um, hdr is not the best the magic for ultimate with its three and a half times is doing a lot better you can see a bit more details here because it's three and a half time but again we have the same as with the main sensor a bit more bluish tone on the magic for ultimate cooler colors and on the xperia pro i warmer colors but in general if you go to seven times here and you go to the maximum 6.3 times that the xperia pro i offers via digital zoom plus some ai enhancement the xperia pro i cannot beat the magic 4 ultimate magic 4 ultimate is clearly the winner in terms of zoom when it comes to photo lengths and depth of field perception something interesting happens sometimes with the magic 4 ultimate which boosts the color so much that you can see here now we have a yellowish kind of tint in the background and a bit more cooled down on the xperia pro i even though it usually is warmer and what we see here is that we get nice focus here everything is nice and sharp on this flower 
And on the Magic 4 Ultimate, we have also focused on this, but it misfocused here because it has this very shallow depth of field because of the large aperture and the large sensor size that only parts of this flower can be sharp, just like this here, for example, the bottom part here. And you have to step further back to get more sharp in, in, in sharpness, where the Xperia Pro I can get everything nice and sharp, which is... I think sometimes for close-up shots very interesting. And talking about close-up shots, we have a super macro mode or ultra macro mode on the Magic 4 Ultimate, which utilizes the ultra wide angle, which has autofocus, which is pretty nice. But we know already that the ultra wide angle is a bit soft. And so you can get very close here, but the detail level is not there. Just let me zoom into the Xperia Pro I here with the ultra wide angle, which also has autofocus, which but cannot go any closer than the main camera, basically. You can see that from this point of view, it's almost looks a little bit like zoomed out. But if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see there's more detail in the shot already. It's more sharp on the Xperia Pro I already. And if I go to 100%, you can see how soft it is. And even if I go, it's pixelating on the Xperia Pro I for, for sure. But it's it looks like there is a bit more sharpness on the Xperia Pro I, definitely. So what you can do with Xperia Pro I is you can go to the main camera sensor and if I go into the main camera sensor you can see the difference minimum focal focus distance ultra wide angle and main is almost no difference on the Xperia Pro I so it doesn't make any sense to use the ultra wide angle that you can usually use for closing uh, for closer in focus uh, but here you can see if I use the main lens almost the, the almost one inch that's used here it just simply beats the Magic 4 Ultimate uh, with details. And even if I zoom in a little bit more and go to the 100% here, uh, even if it's pixelated on the Xperia Pro I, I would prefer the Xperia Pro I. So the Magic 4 Ultimate, yeah, it has this ultra macro mode on paper, but it's not really adding a benefit because most of the time it's very, very soft. On the other hand, the Xperia Pro I doesn't have this feature to go ultra close to an object which would be very nice if it would have this feature. When it comes to selfie portraits, using the selfie cam, not much to say here. We have a bit of better HDR on the Magic 4 Ultimate. You can see my overblown face here on the right. And we have also here, I think I'm on my shirt, a cooler color on the Xperia Pro I. Something going on here with this bluish kind of tint. And here also the grass is a bit too cool. Um, but my face is nicely exposed, I have to say, and it got the colors right, I would say, where the Magic 4 Ultimate on first glance looks superior, but if you zoom in, you can see why is my face so red? It wasn't this red. I can tell you it was just like not even half an hour outside, so it should not be that red and was not that red. Also, it's overdoing it in terms of um, sharpness applied, but I think most of the time it is contrast that it adds here, which makes my eyebrow a little bit too dark, where here it is more natural on the Xperia Pro I. So it looks more natural. The detail level is almost on par. And you can see in general, I think, what is it, 12 megapixels versus 8 megapixels. I think the Magic 4 Ultimate still has an edge, but you have to tweak the colors and uh, at least take the contrast out and get the colors not so punchy. Just look at the background. It's nice and blurry, but this looks almost black. And this is what it should look like, at least. A little bit like this so yeah uh, camera uh, cut, out, cut out you can see very artificial here on the magic 4 ultimate uh, around my hair but uh, the Xperia Pro I is doing worse I would say because it just didn't see my hairline the end of the hairline so it has some parts of the greens in the background also in focus so I think in general selfie camera magic 4 ultimate beats the Xperia Pro I but the Xperia Pro I is not beaten by a lot and the same goes for selfie without any um, other effect like portrait effect or background blur effect. Again, too yellowish, too punchy colors on the Magic 4 Ultimate, too cool colors on the Xperia Pro I. So what's wrong with the grass? It's not yellow, shouldn't be looking like this. But it's also not so toned down as on the Xperia Pro I, which is a bit of weird. As you can see, uh, even the shirt is like a little bit blue, where here yeah, it's a bit too yellowish. but understandable in the sun anyway wider field of view on the magic 4 ultimate because it has the super wide angle on the front camera and for this super wide angle it's doing a pretty nice job in terms of details here you can see it is even beating the xperia pro i a little bit but still has a little bit more of this 
uh, yeah, kind of yellowish, reddish kind of tone. Uh, so the, the colors are a bit too much for my taste and also the contrast is a little bit too much here. When we come to nighttime or low light photography, this is now low light really with this almost one inch size sensors. It's like almost unbelievable. It looks like daytime, but it's really like a dim lit situation here. And you can see that the Magic 4 Ultimate has a brighter kind of photo, probably because due to the larger sensor size being used and larger aperture that we have, um, the opening. And when we zoom in, we have to zoom in pixel peep, otherwise you don't notice much of a difference. You can see some more sharpness applied on the Magic 4 Ultimate, but it's also a little bit more sharp. You can see the algorithm that I think pixel bins here is better because the text here, the small text can be read, read and the, 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 you can read the single characters of this text, where here on the Xperia Pro I, you have a little bit of difficulties identifying the characters on, on of this text. So there is a difference. Also, it's a bit more orangey here on the Xperia Pro I, where the correct color is applied on the Magic 4 Ultimate, which is yellow here for this. And when we take a look at here, you can clearly see that the clean um, here it looks like processed on the Magic 4 Ultimate, the IA as well. So there's some processing going on to sharpen this up where the Xperia Pro I is not doing this clearly. And this is something that later in complete darkness now is a real issue for the Xperia Pro I. It is fighting with its physical one inch size sensor, but without computational photography, the Magic 4 Ultimate simply beats the Xperia Pro I in resolution, in brightness, in almost everything. There's a lot of noise going on. Just look at the details in the woodworks, how much detail you can see with the Magic 4 Ultimate. You can see even the painting and how it was like a little bit uneven painted here uh, on this wood, which you don't see on the Xperia Pro I. And the Xperia Pro I has like this reddish kind of tint here, where the Magic 4 Ultimate tends to go into a little bit of a greenish kind of tint towards the edges. Otherwise, the Xperia Pro I is not a winner in terms of low light, in terms of night photography. Low light, it can still compete, but night, definitely the Magic 4 Ultimate. What do you think about uh, those results? I think Magic uh, 4 Ultimate and Xperia Pro I are very close in the daytime with slight edge towards HDR on the Magic 4 Ultimate, but more unrealistic to punchy colors that I would personally have to add it to make it more, a bit more realistic. The Xperia Pro I behaving more like a digital camera where you get the harsh contrasts, uh, you get really dark shadows, and uh, you cannot edit this probably in post, only if you have raw uh, files, but then you probably won't get the same nice HDR effect as on the Magic 4 Ultimate. On the other side, this is something, it's more like behaving like, like a camera, and I personally like this more. What do you think? Who's the clear winner? Write it down in the comments. So which one of those is the clear winner? I have to say I have a preference. It's the Sony Xperia because the experience taking a photo with a shutter button, with a physical shutter button is much nicer than the Honor Magic 4 Ultimate. Though I like the post-processing of the Honor Magic 4 Ultimate most of the time, I think it is still doing a little bit too contrasty and too over-sharpened photos and the Xperia is more natural. Though the yeah, computational photography bits and parts are not the best HDR, I really like a little bit better on the Honor. I still go for the Sony Xperia Pro I here. Which one you go for? Just write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.